Have you ever felt like an idiot? Well, you should, you're a human, but regardless, I'm about to tell you some tales from the past that might make you feel a lot better in comparison. From killer tomatoes to the world's most deadly computer bug. Without a further ado, here are some of the most brainless blunders, foolish fibs, and mindless mistakes that have ever happened in history. It was the year 1453. Constantinople, built and named after Constantine I, a city that had some of the most formidable defenses ever constructed, had stood for over 1200 years. But a new player was putting all of this at risk. The challengers were none other than the Ottoman Turks. Their commander was the ambitious Mehmed II, who sought to expand his western domain. The defenders? The city of Constantinople, led by Constantine XI, the last ruler of the Byzantine Empire. This battle was to be a showdown unlike any other. The city of Constantinople had some impressive fortification, including the famous double line of Theodosian walls, which were previously thought to be insurmountable. But the Ottoman Turks were not messing around. Mehmed brought with him an arsenal of super cannons, many of which were around 14 feet long. One cannon was said to have measured 27 feet in length and fired a round that weighed over half a ton. Mehmed had sent warnings that the noise from this piece of artillery could quite literally leave people speechless and cause pregnant women to miscarry. Now, I don't know if that's true or not, but you can imagine how absolutely terrifying this bombardment would have been. This conflict put the city under massive stress. The invaders were using powerful cannons that even the great Constantinople's defenses couldn't handle indefinitely. So some of Constantine's knights had to be assigned to maintaining and repairing the city walls. There were also tensions rising between the Orthodox natives living in the city and the Catholic mercenaries that had been sent to defend them. A few days had passed. The siege still continued. The outer walls had already been taken, but there was still a long way to go to reach the inner city. But then, the Ottomans struck gold. A small side gate had been left open, which gave them easy access past the Theodosian walls, and they could take the city with ease. Chaos ensued. Constantinople was taken. The last Byzantine emperor was killed. And so, the Ottomans began their transition from merely a Middle Eastern power into a European one as well. And all that because of an open gate. By the way, is your car door locked? You should probably check. Full disclosure, I'm ethically obligated to inform you that while the open gate was a key moment in the battle, some historians dispute the notion that the invasion wouldn't have been successful if this accident hadn't taken place. And some have even questioned whether or not this was an accident at all, or if someone was paid off. Now, I personally think it's more fun if we just ignore any potential issues in the evidence and pretend like we definitely do know that this was because of some silly little mistake, but hey, you do you. Misconceptions surrounding tomatoes were traveling rampant through Europe during the 18th century. To the people, this fruit was one of many strange items brought back a few centuries earlier from expeditions to the Americas. Many Europeans lived in fear of tomatoes, as it was supposedly common knowledge at the time that all nobles who consumed this red orb of mystery would fall ill soon after. But today, we all know that tomatoes are not poisonous, and that there are even some health benefits to eating them. So, why did they think differently? Well, the main theory is that, back then, people enjoyed serving things on pewter plates, which would be fine if those plates weren't made out of lead. See, when serving other types of food that were popular at the time, using a lead plate would be okay, or at least not as harmful. However, because of the acidity in tomatoes, the lead from the plates was absorbed into the food that people were eating. Which is not a good thing. If you didn't know, lead is toxic to humans and should never be ingested. And it might be the reason why tomatoes got such a bad rap. But then, how did we discover the truth about tomatoes? 
Well, there are many different instances of tomatoes having a bit of folklore surrounding them, beliefs that would slowly fall away over time. However, in this particular case, what ended the reign of terror might have been the invention of pizza, a dish that is traditionally served with a tomato paste base. Seeing people eat this dish and, you know, not die, might have been just the awakening that Europe needed. So this conundrum became better with pizza, as most things do, to the point where today you can fearlessly eat a tomato in front of the whole world and no one will try to stop you. Computers built between the 60s and the 80s typically didn't have that much memory and storage space to go around, which is why, when it came to programming dates into these machines, people believed that storing the century would be unnecessary, and rather opted to simply hard code the number 19 into all of their systems so that they could conserve precious resources. What if we're no longer in the 1900s, you may ask? Well, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. And what if we get there and the bridge is on fire? Well, then you get Y2K. People were as excited for the new century as they were terrified, and this pending computer disaster generated a great deal of unease in society. For the ancient people of the 90s, there was no telling what might happen. Theories varied from transportation services slowing down to full-on apocalypse. Just as an example, here's an extract from an article released by the Modern Healthcare Journal in 1998. A gunshot victim arrives in bad shape, losing blood, and he needs to be surgically opened up. But the emergency department's air cleansing ventilation system has shut down. Trauma surgeons hesitate because they're concerned about infection in the stagnant, clammy cubicle. Within minutes, though, the patient's conditions worsens, and he now needs major surgery. Doctors call for a courier to whisk him up to the sixth floor operating suite, STAT, but none of the elevators budge. The patient bleeds to death. Now, while extreme, these concerns were not without reason. By the time that Y2K started to become a genuine problem, so much of the world was run by computers and people had no idea whether or not these computers would still be able to operate properly because of this so-called millennium bug. Banks were scared that they wouldn't be able to calculate daily interest rates. Power plants thought that computer-automated routine checks on things like water pressure and radiation levels might fail, and pretty much every company that stored consumer information in a database was also at huge risk. So, what actually happened? Well, according to most sources, not much. There were a few instances here and there. There was one nuclear power station in Japan that had some equipment failure, but backup facilities were in place so the public was safe. A few electronic billboards at train stations displayed the wrong year on the screen, but I couldn't find any reports of anything as grim as described in the previous article. But while we may have avoided a computer disaster, we did not manage to escape a financial one. The US spent an estimated $100 billion in preparation for this potential threat, but shockingly, it didn't seem to have made that much of a difference in comparison to countries that spent far less. Russia is said to have only spent $200 million towards preventing this catastrophe, and yet they reportedly experienced just as many, or rather just as few issues as their Western rivals. And there are even claims that Italy allocated as little as $1.9 million towards the Millennium Crisis. But the reality is that we might never know the whole story. There are researchers, specialists, and individuals of interest alike who say that Y2K was a genuine threat, and dispute claims regarding how little some of these countries spent on this supposedly non-existent issue. UK official Margaret Beckett stated in January of the year 2000, It is not true that some international partners spent next to nothing. We know from our many contacts in the International Year 2000 Cooperation Center that a huge amount of work was done across the world, including Russia, Asia, Latin America, and Africa. And it isn't just government officials who dispute these claims, there are also businessmen, like Bob Hammersley, who was the senior IT services manager at Sainsbury's, which, for those of you that don't know, is the second largest chain of grocery stores in the UK. He stated that, If we had not addressed the Y2K problem, the business would have literally stopped. 
If you think about it, these conflicting reports kinda do make sense. The turn of the 21st century was as inevitable as the passage of time itself, so it would be a pretty embarrassing thing to be unprepared for. Now, I'm not saying that information was redacted or manipulated in order to downplay the potential threat, I'm just saying that you can understand why companies and governments whose reputations were at stake might want to do such a thing if it meant that they could downplay the damage caused by their own short-sightedness. But regardless of how much a threat Y2K ever really was, we can all agree that all of the commotion and stress that was caused by it could have been avoided if we had just planned a bit further ahead. So I think that there are three main things we can take away from today's video. One, learn to plan ahead, or you might get bugged by your past mistakes. Two, don't be reckless, or your best defenses won't be enough to save you. And three, everything is made better with pizza. Thanks for watching, guys. Remember to like and subscribe. Please comment down below. It helps a lot with the algorithm. Just tell me what you want me to cover in other videos. Tell me what you thought of this video. Tell me anything. I don't care. Tell me your favorite color. It's, it's okay either way. I don't, I, don't, I don't really care. Please just comment anything. Uh, yeah, that, that's about it. Have a great day. Cheers.